Holt International's Child Nutrition Program is designed to standardize child growth screening protocols to ensure that children are growing to their full potential. An important part of this process is anthropometric measurements, which refers to the way that children are measured and includes measurements like height and weight. This video will demonstrate the proper procedures for measuring height or length of a child. The routine assessment of a child's growth provides an important guide to a child's health, development, nutritional status, and response to treatment or nutrition interventions. We measure length or height to help us assess a child's development. Length or height is a fundamental measurement for tracking a child's growth and malnutrition risk. Measurement techniques for length and height. Tools. To measure a child's height or length, you will need the appropriate length or height equipment, a pen, and appropriate growth charts. Children zero to two years old are measured lying down. This is called length. Children two years and older are measured standing up. This is called height. Both measurements are recorded to assess the same growth indicator. You will need a length board to measure children's length under two years of age. A length board may also be used to measure height for children who are older than two years old, but under 130 centimeters tall. For children taller who are able to stand, you can use a wall-mounted measurement tape. The person measuring the child must first wash their hands. It is important to sanitize all measurement equipment before screening a child, between screenings, and after you have completed all screenings for the day. Measuring height and length should be done swiftly but accurately. It requires two caregivers to measure a child. Before you begin, ensure that one caregiver is assigned to the role of assistant and the other caregiver is assigned to the role of lead. Length is measured for all children under two years old, regardless of their ability to stand. The assistant will position themselves behind the child's head, holding the child's head perpendicular to the base of the board. As the lead obtains the measurement, the assistant should talk to and comfort the child. The lead will be at the child's feet. Holding the child's legs straight, push the sliding board firmly against the child's feet. Make sure the child's feet are flat. Put eyes level with the measurement tape and quickly read the child's length. Immediately record the measurement to the nearest decimal while the assistant tends to the child. Remember, for children under two years old, you will measure their length. Before measuring, remove the child's shoes and any hair ornaments. Ensure the board is lying on a flat surface. The lead will hold the child's feet against the sliding footboard. Make sure the child's heels and calves and buttocks are flat against the base of the board. The lead should ensure the child's head is facing straight up with their chin slightly tucked. Immediately call the measurement out loud and write down the child's height to the nearest decimal while the assistant helps the child put their shoes back on. Children older than two years old should have their height measured. To measure the child, use a wall-mounted measuring tape or some other standardized measurement tool. A cloth measuring tape is not appropriate. The assistant should ensure the child's feet, legs, buttocks, and back are fully flush with the wall or measurement board and that the child is holding still. The lead should ensure the child's chin is slightly tucked, eyes are forward, and that all hair ornaments are removed from the child's head. Press the sliding head piece firmly on the child's head and then bring yourself to eye level to read the measurement. Say the measurement out loud and immediately record it to the nearest decimal point while the assistant cares for the child. Okay. Remember, for children over two years old who can stand on their own, you will measure their height. Before measuring, remove the child's shoes and any hair ornaments. 
Ensure the board is standing on a flat surface. The assistant will hold the child's feet flat against the wall. Make sure the child's heels, calves, and buttocks are flush with the wall or the measurement board. The lead should ensure the child's head is facing straight ahead with their chin slightly tucked. Make sure the child's shoulders are level, their hands are at their sides, and their shoulders are against the wall or measuring board. Slide the headpiece down and press gently but firmly on the child's head. With your eyes level with the measuring tape, quickly read and record the child's height. Make sure you are getting the correct measurement. Immediately call out and write down the child's height to the nearest decimal while the assistant helps the child put their shoes back on. Documentation. A single measurement does not reflect the rate of growth. In order to establish a child's growth trends, the child's measurements must be routinely made and plotted on a growth chart. Measurements should be immediately recorded into the nutrition screening system. The nutrition screening system form should be completed within the same day as the child's measurements. In order to complete the nutrition screening system action plan, growth charts must be consistently plotted and interpreted. This measurement must be recorded in the child's record in the nutrition screening system database and must include the date and name of the measurer and plotted on a length for age, height for age, weight for length, weight for height, or BMI growth chart. There are five growth charts that use a child's length or height. Depending on the age of the child, you may use more than one of these growth charts. Length or height for age reflects the height relative to the child's chronological age. Weight for length or weight for height can indicate if a child is wasted within normal ranges or overweight. This measurement can be impacted if a child is stunted. BMI, or body mass index, is directly correlated to the amount of body fat a person has. Each child should have their own set of growth charts that track their overall progress. Refer to these charts when determining the child's overall health status. Watch the growth chart training video to learn more about proper growth chart plotting and chart interpretation. You may also review the Child Nutrition Training Manual or corresponding Child Nutrition Training Modules. Tracking children's growth consistently and accurately is one of the best preventative methods for combating malnutrition early in a child's life. This is just one of five critical indicators of a child's growth and development. Please review Holt's other Child Nutrition Training videos.